Hi, in this video, I'm going to give you one more illustration of how to replace complex nested ifs with much simpler formula. And we're going to do this with a case study. So in this case study, what I have is a bunch of employees, their joining date and leaving date. Now, based on these dates, what we have to do is compute the number of days they served in our payroll in each of these months. Now, the most intuitive option you may think of to solve this problem is to use the if function. But if you use the if function, how would the formula look like? Let's see this. So you can see how complex the formula is looking. It has like five different set of conditions. And by the way, I'm using the if s function here, which is somewhat simpler. And I have five combinations here. And in each of these combinations, I have a set of and or, and in some places, even a is blank function. It looks very complicated. And why is it complicated? because of the combinations we have. See, an employee who's joining us or who's with us might have joined us somewhere in the past, in the current month or in a subsequent month. Same way the employee could have left us in the past, in the current month, in the future, or the employee may even not have left us, is still continuing with us. So when you combine all these things, I have nine possible combinations. And each of the combinations will give me different answers for day's work. And I need different formulas here. Some of the combinations is going to have same formula, no doubt. Uh, but even if I take that into consideration, I am left with five different possible answers. Nine combinations and five different possible answers. How do we simplify this? Or what is the simpler alternative? I'm going to take you through that step by step. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to simply take the day's work as ending date minus starting date. Now for an employee who has served us all through the month, who's joined us in the past and is going to leave us in the future, the day's work is going to be current month end date minus previous month end date. So my last date is going to be current month end date, start date is previous month end and we've got the answer. Let me fix the dollar signs in the correct places. Now what if they leave us during the month? I have that here in case of employee D. Employee D left us on 12 January 2023. So for January 23, when I'm calculating the days worked, this affects my calculation. To account for this possibility, what I need to do is, if the employees left us, we need to truncate the end date on the day they left. So I'm going to use the min function so that we take the end date as the date they left us or the current month end date, whichever is lower. Now, what if the employees already left us in the past, which is what we have with employee B. Employee B left us way before. Now, the formula we've used here gives us a negative number because the end date here is minimum of leaving date versus current month end date. And leaving date is even before the start date that we've used. Now, what we want here is the answer to be zero. If I take the leaving date same as the start date, start date in the sense of previous month and date, I'm going to get zero as the answer here. How do we do that? This can be done using median function. So I'm going to take median of the day the employee left us, the current month end date or the previous month end date. What this formula effectively does for me is that it ensures that my end date falls on or before current month and date and on or after previous month and date. Now I need to do the same for our start date as well. Because if an employee is going to start us in the future, I don't want to take the employee into consideration. The employee has already joined us in the past. For my practical purposes here, I would like to take the start date as this previous month and date. So here again, I'm going to use the median function, median of the day the employee joined us comma the current month end date and the previous month end date this formula does the job for us we still have one small problem though that is where the leaving date is blank because when the leaving date is blank it means the employee is still with us but what the median function would do is it'll ignore blank cells. And therefore I'm getting wrong answer here. I should be getting answer as 30. So to fix this, what I can do is I can put a condition saying that if the leaving date is blank, then 
take the current year ending date as the answer or current month ending date now you could use a if function but just as an alternative what i'm going to do is i'm going to give a formula as leaving date plus current year ending date multiplied by check whether the leaving date is blank what this is going to do is if the leaving date is blank that part is going to be zero and it's going to take the current year ending date if the leaving date is not blank then this addition that we're doing is going to go to zero and it will take the leaving date here so i press enter got the answer let me copy and paste this across and we've got the results perfectly now the median function that we used here or the logic we used here is not necessarily very intuitive for many of us but let's look at its simplicity by simply looking at the size of the formula look at the size of this one versus what we saw earlier pretty complicated right uh, the earlier one but this is not very intuitive though. but it's much more simpler and more effective now if you want to understand or to be able to write much effective solutions that are much simpler but not intuitive one way to do that is to improve your mathematical thinking and if you're keen on improving your mathematical thinking and your algorithms and if you want to learn ms excel do check out the course at perfectusacademy.com in our program our focus is not on functions our focus is more on algorithms and techniques so you would find it more useful before i end this a small caveat median function is an aggregate function that means it doesn't spill so when you're using a dynamic array this won't work so if you in a dynamic array if you want to use it you will have to use a median function with a map function or you will have to do the median path alone you may have to use a switch function or a fs function or even a f function for that matter so that's for today thank you everyone if you found the video useful do like the video and do share it with your friends and colleagues and do subscribe to our channel and please do leave your thoughts in the comment section and we'll respond to it thank you very much take care see you bye bye